What is up team? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy. As I said in last week's video, I kind of wanted to film a video kind of talking to you guys about physiotherapy. Basically, I've been getting a lot of questions about the course, what it is, what we do, the application process and everything. So I kind of wanted to answer as many questions as I could in this video. So stop whatever you're doing, chill out. I am wearing comfy attire because I'm ready to give you as much information as I can. I thought it would be good to start off with my whole process. So I studied in Abu Dhabi and I graduated in Abu Dhabi. So what we did was the International Baccalaureate. We have six classes, three higher level, three standard level, and each class you get a grade from one to seven, seven being the absolute highest. And you also have TOK, and then you also have an extended essay. You also have like CAS hours, which is like community service on the side. And then by the time you graduate, you add all of those final grades together. And basically to study in the UK, they go through the UCAS website where you can apply to five universities you write a personal statement and that personal statement is sent to all five universities you either get a conditional or an unconditional so I'm pretty sure for the UK usually it's a conditional offer so one of the questions that I did get asked on Instagram is why I chose physiotherapy so I, I always had physio on my mind and my mom had surgery so I had to take care of her and so you had the like care aspect as well and I met her physios and I love the whole concept of improving someone's quality of life, rehabbing them, trying to get them back up on their feet or mobilizing again. A lot of people told me, do your research on physiotherapy. And I can't say that more to you guys. If you guys are considering physio, definitely have a look online or look into the course of whatever uni you're looking into. Another reason why I chose physiotherapy is because it's not just a office job you're interacting with people it's a rewarding job you're constantly learning on the job you know you won't be getting the same conditions all the time every patient is different so that's what i loved about it is that it's always interesting so i just thought like i would never get bored a lot of people compare physiotherapy to let's say um, a personal trainer or sports science or something. A lot of people can have a misconception of what physio actually is. In the UK, most universities will split their degree into three main areas. Neurology, cardiorespiratory, and musculoskeletal. With obviously your side of placements, actual clinical hours, hands-on experience, which I think is absolutely amazing because over the world, you won't always get the chance to actually work in a hospital setting during your degree. A lot of people don't realize that we have handle multiple areas, not just the sports side, do a lot more. So I also just want to make clear, this is stuff that I've learned on my degree. This is kind of what I've heard from other people. So I'm just kind of spreading my knowledge. So that's just kind of like a little disclaimer. I've also gotten a couple messages about people who are struggling to decide between sports science and physio. Um, now I can't really talk about the sports science side because obviously I don't, I don't do that course. But what I have learned is that in terms of applying for jobs, I do know that physiotherapy is more so seen as superior or preferred. Um, I assume it's just because we might delve into more areas as I talked about and we kind of go more into depth about the physiological side, I think. I ended up doing some research so I could optimize the information I'm giving you guys. What I understand is that graduating with a sports science degree would get you about 13k a year if you're lucky. While doing physio will guarantee you not only a job, but also a starting annual income of approximately 21k a year. I also asked one of my friends who took a sports science degree and is now doing physio about the difference between the two. He stated that there were three solid overlaps which were biomechanics, skeletal muscle physiology, and cardiovascular physiology. He continued with saying, with physio, you're going into specifics as you're training to do a job, whereas with sports science, you're not training to do a job. Instead, you're more so studying and conducting research. The next question that I'm asked a lot is how time consuming the course is. What I can say is that honestly, it depends on what type of person you are. Um, so if you're organized, obviously you'll have a lot of time. It also kind of depends how much time you want to put into personal study so at MMU, you do have study packs that you receive and you have to do in your personal time, but you do get days off to work on those study packs because they're quite heavy. You're getting this degree in three years, which is insane because, you know, in Canada or Australia, it takes a lot longer to do a physiotherapy degree. So um, they're compacting a lot of information into three years. So in first year, we were in class 
Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday was a nine to five. Wednesday and Friday were nine to ones. Um, throughout the year, the way it was structured is that you get these study packs for each unit. Each year you hit all three areas. It's not like each year is designated to one area, which I actually really like because it allows you to build. Um, and also when it comes to placements, you kind of have a wide range of knowledge in all three areas so i kind of liked that and then second year we were just in tuesdays and thursdays but both of those days were nine to fives also in second year was when we started our clinical placements at the end of first year we did do a placement but it was a four-day placement and it was just observational um, i assume it was just to kind of get us ready for second year but if you want me to go more into kind of the placement side of things then i can make a separate video on that so yeah i mean obviously coronavirus kind of screwed up my placements because i only managed to get one out of the three placements that we're supposed to do because um, two of them got cancelled but that just means we have to work harder next year and fit in those placements because obviously we need a certain number of clinical hours to graduate so to answer the question in first year I you do have time I was part of the physio society obviously I think that's super beneficial and you get to know the classmates in all three years well four years including foundation and then I was also part of volleyball. And what I found in second year was I didn't realize how much time I had in first year. I wish I kind of spent more time socializing, to be honest. I also think it depends on what your priorities are because in first year, um, obviously I did those two societies and I also went to the gym. That's first year. Second year, obviously it's cracked up a notch and you do still have time. I am still a part of both of those societies and I do still go to the gym. But obviously when placements comes around is really when you kind of have to prioritize and prioritization is one of the most important of things. When I was on placement, I was doing an eight to four and I had to get up at five in the morning because my placement was two and a half hours away. And so I had to get up, yeah, five, five in the morning, excuse me. So when I got home, I was exhausted. That's where like the meal planning really came and pulled through. <laughs> So yeah, in second year, you do still have time to do things. You do have to organize and prioritize your work. By doing that, you find the time for other things. So another question that I got was around the master's degree. And again, I'm not doing the master's degree. I have a friend in it, so I know a little bit about it. What I do know is the master's degree is squished into two years. And if you think about it, the three-year course is already a lot of content. The master's course is two years and you're trying to hit the same points as the BSc course. So you're still getting those study packs, you're still getting clinical hours, you're still hitting all three areas. My friend said kind of the exact same thing I did, but I assume there's more strictness to it. If you're organized, you have time for extra stuff. So you really have to analyze what type of person you are. So application process wise, um, for the UK, you do it through UCAS. I asked Anushka because she is originally from India, so she applied from India. And kind of the, the way that your system works in whatever country you're with gets converted into like the British brain. Usually if you're in the UK, you have GCSE grades, you have A-level grades, and that kind of gets converted into like UCAS points as well, I think. I had IB, but they had like an IB version of that on UCAS, but she also had to do a personal statement and do it through UCAS. So I assume wherever you are in the world, you have to go through that UCAS. Let's say once you get like that unconditional or conditional offer, you'll get an interview. It kind of depends on how competitive the university is, I suppose, but you'll get an interview and sometimes there'll be solo interviews or group interviews. So I had both. One of them I did via Skype call, which was my individual interview. And then for a different uni, I had a group interview and I actually had to go up to Newcastle. But it was like a group interview, but they also had individual elements. So I just realized by looking at the time that this is gonna be a lot longer of a video than I wanted it to be, but I'm trying to consume as much information so it really clarifies things for you guys. This is a subjective question, of course, but people were asking me about the kind of difficulty of the course. And I have to say it is hard because you're learning about every single muscle, every single ligament, every single nerve, um, and then you're having to connect that anatomy to the physiological aspect of the patient's body, their condition that they're presenting with. And then you're having to reason your treatment by connecting it to the problems that they're presenting with. It is difficult and I, I don't mean to overwhelm you because I found it so interesting. It was more, and I was enjoying it, it was not as hard as like, if I wasn't enjoying it. Because you know, if you're enjoying something, it doesn't come across as 
difficult per se. Sure, it can be like a lot, but it's like fun. It's a lot of hard work, but it's super interesting. I could ask any of my friends and they would say the same. So to end this video, I just want to say that physiotherapy is such a rewarding job. You work with patients from the time they're born, you know, pediatrics to geriatrics, helping a 75 year old who just got a hip replacement walk again. And yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful job. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments below or message me on Instagram. I hope that at least helped some of you guys if you guys are kind of in between of whether or not to do physiotherapy, hopefully that convinced you to do it or clarified some things for you guys. I don't know. I'm just mumbling now. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.